Welcome back to the uh, workshop. Um, today I'm going to show you how I do the astral bars on a double glazed unit. So it um, could be in a door or a window, it's the same principle, whatever. So we're going to do a little focus video just on the, uh, the planton bars and how I uh, go about approaching a project that's incorporating that type of glazing. So the reason you'd use a planton bar is to keep the width of the timber as narrow as uh, as you want really, as narrow as possible. So um, anything conservation conservation wise, um, so you've got old houses with narrow single glazed glazing bars are about 20 mil thick, sometimes even 16 mil thick. Um, unless you use like a slim light double glazing unit, um, which have their own series of problems. Um, the other option is to either have a, a thick uh, glazing bar in the sash that takes a uh, 15 mil rebate to uh, hold the two pieces of glass either side. So it ends up about minimum sort of 38 mil width in sight line, which is quite chunky. Or the other option is to use a single pane of glass through the whole, whole door or whole window and uh, stick uh, astrical bars onto the face of that piece of glass uh, to give it the look of glazing bars without the uh, structural element of having a piece of timber going through the whole whole piece of glass. So um, it's a good solution in my eyes. Um, now I've figured out a fairly decent system of doing it. Um, originally, when I first started doing it, it's sort of a case of making a, a casement, how you would normally glazing it and then uh, literally gluing the pieces of timber onto the glass. Um, it's all very well and good. It's quite time consuming. Um, it's difficult to see all the, the little glazing mark to the uh, unit edges at the sides so glue them in place. And uh, if you ever had to replace one, it was, it was an absolute pig to try and replace it. So um, the system I've come up with, basically it's using the um, internally glazed uh, piece of glass and the, on the outside of the sash, um, the glazing bars are actually uh, pegged into the frame with a dowel. So they're all doweled in and glued as part of the sash at, at the glue up stage. And uh, it's all then pre-finished as one piece. So the outside of the sash is already in place when you glaze it. Um, and then the inside of the sash, you have a separate frame that goes in afterwards once it's been glazed. So I'll, uh, I'll show you the process that I, uh, I use to uh, Put these bars in place. So these, this is a uh, top rail. Ignore the sizings for this job. I'm using it as a, a principle. This is a bit of a conservation job in itself, so it's not really that appropriate for uh, for your standard double glazed window. Um, but it's more of a uh, good idea. I'm showing you the technique that I use. So uh, it's ex um, internally glazed, like I said. So the uh, mould on the outside I use is a 30 degree uh, bevel to replicate the uh, putty of a traditional window. So what we'll do is uh, plane up the glazing bars to the size that we need. Um, in this case, they're 21 and a half mil wide. So the sight line of the glazing bar is 21 and a half to match the, uh, the current windows. And then the thickness of that wants to be the same thickness as, the, uh, as what's left from the rebate there. So from face, to the rebate is the thickness of that astral bar so that when they're um, joined in like that you've got a sheer like a flat face for the glass to sit against so next job is to um, once you've planed your all your timber up and got everything machined so these will all be tenon etc as normal is uh, work out where you want your glazing bars at so what I use is a, I just put a straight line right in the centre. So these sashes only have one going across the centre, but it's a, the same principle whether there's one, lots of uh, like Georgian panes, so eight panes, 10 panes, whatever. It's the same principle um, either way. Just put a uh, straight line around the uh, piece of timber where you want the glazing bar. And then uh, we work to this line with my uh, doweling machine. Now, if you've not got a doweling machine, I'm sure you could uh, make some sort of jig that clamped to this uh, and have a return over the top of the um, piece of uh, over the rebate with um, a hole drilled in it or a guide of some sort of metal guide drilled into your jig um, on a pillar drill and you could use that so you put your, your jig across here and then you could drill down into the sash at these line 
mark points here. So um, if you've not got a doweling machine, it's not the end of the world. You can do this by hand if you make it, make yourself a little jig, um, but it helps if you've got the right machine. Okay, so once I've uh, drawn my lines on, I uh, come over to, uh, to my doweling machine. Now, I think somebody spotted this in another video in the background, and uh, this is pretty much what I use it for. Um, exclusively. So it uh, doesn't get used very often. It's basically like a, um, a domino machine. So if you've seen a domino or a, uh, a dual dower, if you've seen Maffel make a, a machine called a DDF, I think it's a DDF 40. Um, it's a dual doweling machine. So instead of you have two dowels that uh, drill into a piece of timber as a location, and a jointing method. So this is the, the precursor to that basically. It's an old machine, but uh, inside here I've sort of capped it off for dust extraction, but there's uh, a head with um, two spinning um, collets, so you can put two dowels in there. Let's see if I can show that on the camera. Put two dowels in there, and they sort of spin in opposite directions, and uh, the whole thing plunges into the workpiece and creates uh, two dowel holes uh, perfectly aligned with each other um, against the bed as well. So you can join bits of timber and uh, all sorts together using dowels basically. So a really cheap method of joining things together. And it also locates them and holds them square and flat. So it, yeah, like I say, it's a precursor to the domino, a um, bit more old school and probably a bit less accurate to be honest because the, the way it moves it slides along the bed and you've got the whole motor and everything sliding on this bed here and as it does so it sort of when it hits the end it's got like a slight bit of rock um, in the machine i mean probably because it's a bit old it probably needs a sideways adjusting but uh, for the purposes of this job it's perfect um it's a nice little machine to use it's air operated so you're not having to hold a domino or anything you just put your piece of timber here press the button and it uh, works for you so uh, brilliant bit of kit what we're going to be using it for I've got one dowel in it so I uh, I just use it to go on that line that I've drawn uh, with a reference line on here for the center of the cutter and uh, I plunge a dowel hole into that um, into the molding on the outside of the sash for where the uh, astragal bar is going to going to be placed I'm just going to set the height um, using this test piece. got a really good height adjustment on it actually, it's really smooth and uh, accurate. You don't want the dowel too high or too low <coughs> in that, um, so where the rebate is, you don't want it too near the face because obviously your, um, your astragal bar will be a, a bevel shaped towards that edge so you've got less strength in that, um, in the piece of timber the nearer you go to this. So you want to be sort of three mil off this face with your dowel and uh, I'm using a six mil dowel to join them together. Let's fire it up. Turn it on first. Why aren't you working, you beast? Come on, baby. Don't let me down. Okay, so everywhere I've got a glazing bar, so I'm in line. I use this reference line on the back here that I've squared over. Line it up with this uh, one on the bed and uh, put a dowel hole in it. Like I say, you could uh, you can make yourself a little jig, jig, jig. Make yourself a little jig and uh, dowel them by hand uh, with a with a 
drill bit through a, a metal collet mounted into uh, some sort of 90 degree jig. So it's not the end of the world if you've not got this. Uh, what I will say is if you're setting out and you've got more than one glazing bar in your sash, make sure that you uh, don't set it out off centers, that you put the timber widths in and uh, divide the, uh, the glazing, the sight line of the glass that's left equally rather than dividing the centers equally. If you do it by centers, then you'll get uh, uneven pane sizes. So your uh, center pane will have less glass than the top and bottom pane. So bear that in mind when you're setting out. I want to run all these through now and then uh, turn my attention to the uh, actual glazing bar side. Okay, so now all them holes are done in the styles. You can do the holes in the rails as well if, you, if you're doing, uh, like I say, the Georgian style or got more than just a single glazing bar across the sash because uh, the ones I'm making here just, just have the one bar, so it's just uh, one hole in each style and one glazing bar between, but it's the same principle, whatever. So uh, now I need to cut the, uh, the astral bars to the same length as the rails for the uh, horizontal bars. So. Um, I cut a 30 degree end one, one side, mark the other end and uh, set up a stop if you're doing multiple ones and cut all them off so they're identical to the, uh, to the length of the bevel on your rails that you've made for the sash. Okay, so once all your uh, horizontal glazing bars are cut to length, next uh, port of call is to put the corresponding dowel into the end of that bar there. So it's the same principle, back on the machine, um, working from the same face and uh, just, just plunge that dowel into the end grain and uh, that gives you a corresponding hole to, uh, to dowel into that uh, point there and that should join the two bits together. I usually work with a square stock at this stage. Um, you can put the bevel on all your all your glazing bars first if you wish. Um, the only reason I don't is because when you're going through a glazing bar with two more, so at the intersection in the centre of a piece of glass, so when you've got uh, a meeting like this, if you put the bevel on already and you have to work off the face, it's sort of prone to rocking on the uh, machine when you clamp it down. Uh, it'd also be difficult to drill if you're drilling them by hand with a jig. Um, and uh, as the drill bit enters, if you've got a beveled surface, um, it's more likely to deflect slightly and uh, be slightly more inaccurate. So keeping the stock square at this stage before you've uh, drilled the holes is, uh, is a good idea. Um, if you've got really short pieces of glazing bar, that you're a bit worried about machine molding then uh, or spindle molding and bevel on i've got a little jig so you just put some uh, sacrificial fences on the machine and it literally exposes just the cutter to the piece of timber it's quite safe to mold them small pieces they're not going to dip into the machine or uh, or damage them so um, it's the best way to do it i've found but uh, it's not impossible to mold everything first then cut it to length and do the drilling after when I get to this stage, um, if I've got quite a few uh, dowels to do, I'll find the centre of the cut. Um, and I've got a series of lines already put on here, so, but uh, if you square off this fence, um, you can find a line here. And then I just screw a, uh, screw a sacrificial, well not sacrificial, but uh, a movable fence down. Um, into the bed like this it just gives you a real quick reference you put the glazing bar up to it and uh, that's where the dowel goes into the end
It's the now I just grab a dowel. These are Koya dowels that I uh, made myself. I might do a video next time I make some of these, but uh, I've got a few here, but I've got a pot of these uh, just cut off to the lengths that I'd use. So some longer ones here that I use between two glazing bars because it has to stretch uh, between over this section and then into the two ends of the other two. And then some slightly shorter ones that uh, go in the ends of the glazing bars and then go into the sash. So they just fit into the holes that we've drilled like so and you've got yourself a joint and uh, it's nice and flush that wants to be flush with the uh, inside edge of that uh, that rebate there so that when it's glued up and clamped up you can put your uh, two mil foam tape along this edge set back from the edge and then put one in the center of the glazing bar again set back from the edge um, and then you can perimeter seal both corners from both sides and this will be sealed and glued to the uh, rail so you've got a perfect seal around your uh, astragal bars and if you ever need to uh, come and uh, replace the unit in the future you can just cut this seal around the edge on the outside uh, with a multi-tool it's it takes 20 seconds to go around the whole unit um, take your beads out on the inside and just push the glass out and everything will stay exactly where it should be and it's nice and easy. Um, so at this stage uh, now I'd uh, take the bevels off of these these bars so every horizontal bar that you've put in do all them first before you uh, join the others into it. If you've got vertical bars joining into this bevel these now assemble the sash and then uh, then you can cut the lengths of your, your next bevel bars to suit what's left in the height so um, they want to be equal equal distance uh, so that they match pain sizes top and bottom um, the only time you do it differently is uh, with a sash window so your sash window your glazing bars would run from bottom rail to meeting rail meeting rail to top rail first and then uh, the horizontal glazing bars would be put in second so they would be the short ones spanning between so do these square, mould them now, and once they're moulded, you could uh, uh, well drill them. If you've got bars going through, put your holes in these, then uh, mould them, and then you can work on the other bars. But uh, because I'm not putting a cross-section bar in these, I can't do that process to show you. Okay, so like I said before, I've uh, got a sacrificial fence here that uh, basically bridges the gap across the fences and any hole in the bed is just what the cutter makes so uh, when you, you feed in short pieces um, that are really fiddly through uh, and there's nothing to support the material on the cast bed where the ring cutouts are uh, you need to make a bed like this of some sort uh, usually just two nine two pieces of ply at 90 degrees and uh, feed it over your cutter and it will just make the hole uh, that you need here um, all I've done is just screw that through. I've got a couple of uh, little screw holes in the fences inside and just put a screw through them to pull it back to the fences. And then just set that up so that it takes the cut out of the bevel on the uh, glazing bar. Now um, you might find, depending on the size of glazing bar you're using, that to get a bevel that looks sort of accurate, so you've got a nice six mil center in the um, glazing bar to a nice bevel to the edge. Uh, where you want like a one mil flat on this the edge that's left um, you're gonna have to adjust the angle from uh, your 30 degrees around the outside of the sash or that's what i use as a 30 degrees so um, in this case i'm going to use a 35 degree angle on the glazing bars what you've got to be careful of is your cuts um, on the remaining glazing bars if you've got them intersecting these ones so one end is going to be a 35 degree cut and one end is going to be 30 degree cut where it meets the sash and any glazing bars that are between two horizontal ones um, are going to require a 35 degree cut on each end as well so um, you just got to be pay attention and be careful of that uh, when you're cutting the uh, glazing bars in after this point
So before we assemble and glue together, um, I like to put a V-groove joint in all of my uh, external joinery, um, especially on the outside base. So um, just use a bit of sandpaper to put like a rounded moulding on here, and that will intersect the, the round I've got on the, on the bevel there, and uh, it creates a, a V-groove. If you can see that here, sorry. It creates a V-groove in the uh, joint there, and then you fill that V-groove with a, a flexible sealant uh, designed for that job. Uh, it's called a V-groove sealant, and uh, then you paint over the top of that, and it creates a really, it's like a really flexible filler, and um, any cracks or movement in, in that joint, um, the filler just stretches and uh, keeps it sealed from any water ingress. So. Uh, that's the idea of the V groove um, in that joint. So put them in before you assemble it. And it's just a case of uh, putting the sash together. Remember that before you uh, do any uh, assembly or anything, uh, or glue, final gluing, you want to sand all these edges uh, to get rid of any planar ripples and marks from the machining. So uh, I've got a little jig here. It's just a couple of beads pinned onto a board and it holds the beads nicely sort of wedges them in place and uh, you can get your orbital sander on there uh, or hand sander if you wish. So grab a, a two dowels, put them into the uh, glazing bar, pop it into the style. Rails. And there we have it. That's the uh, completed sash with the uh, glazing bar mounted into it. Um, when that's glued together, um, you've got the perfect face there to uh, put the glass into, and uh, everything will be shear faced, so you can uh, just have a single pane of glass inside that unit. If you're glazing from the inside, um, what I will do to these before I glue them up is put a, uh, a groove in the bottom of the sash, like a eight mil, diameter round groove and I run it out the ends of the tenons or at least one tenon um, so it comes out there and that gives you the opportunity then if, if this seal breaks down on the outside at any point in the future hopefully any um, water will come down to the bottom of the sash sit in this groove and then it can uh, run out the ends of the sash through that uh, hole in the side there so that's the theory um, and if you get any water leaking inside, uh, you know you need to do some maintenance on your windows and uh, check this pointing seal around the outside. So um, it's sort of a, a good notification uh, as if to maintain your windows. So it's a, it's a great system, it works for me. And uh, like I said, it's very easy to, uh, to replace a double glaze unit if it goes wrong. On the inside of the sash here, so you'll have a, a bead, I'll go get one. So on the inside of the sash here, um, you really sort of your options are limitless as to what mouldings you can use on your windows. So um, if you wanted like an OG moulding, you can put a, a bead with an OG moulding, um, and then you'd have to scribe the appropriate moulding over this beading on the inside. Um, at the minute, what seems very popular is just a, a square bead with the uh, rounds taken off. So it's just a round edge, round over piece, rounded bit on the corners uh, in there. And then uh, the inside frame would be just a flat um, piece of uh, timber. And you can join these together in the centers very easily and chop them in the frame there. And uh, you can hide the pins that fix the bead in place behind this, uh, this section here. So you make this up as a a mirror frame to what you've got there. Um, so if you've got um, glazing bars running through the unit like this and joining in the middle, you'd make that frame up as a one piece frame, spray it or paint it all as one thing. And then um, once your beading's in place, drop that frame in on top. So 
Um, that works again as a good system that um, if you have to replace the pane in the future, you just whip your multi-tool underneath the foam tape that sticks it in place and uh, tape that off as a one piece and it's uh, very little work then to clean that off and, and reapply it to the window. So uh, that's pretty much it. Um, I'm not going to uh, glue it up and paint it and show you a finished article. I think you can, uh, you can see how it all works from, uh, from that section there. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, I'll be doing some more joinery based stuff. Hopefully going to get a, uh, a complete double glazed window build done in the future. So uh, hit subscribe and uh, it'll notify you when that comes online. Um, and yeah, lots of uh, videos planned. So uh, keep an eye out.